Hi guys, uh, I'm Eden and I have Emily with me. Um, and well, I'm a Norwegian service designer based in Oslo. Um, worked with uh, mostly public sector uh, the last five years, uh, doing a lot of different uh, digitalization projects. Uh, my background is originally from uh, media sociology. So I'm quite like a methods geek when it comes to service design. Um, and Emily? Yes, hello everybody. My name is Emily. Uh, I'm a senior service designer at ID in Oslo. Uh, I work uh, closely with Idun. Um, my background is user research and uh, product design. Um, but for the last couple of years, I've been working a lot on uh, developing learning experiences and creating leadership training um, uh, through um, uh, uh, experience design. So we're really excited to see all different kinds of um, uh, people joining uh, with different backgrounds and geography. So um, I'll let Eden take over. She's going to go through uh, the planet centric design introduction. Yeah, just like um, this is the only slide about where we work, <laughs> but just as a heads up, we, we work in IDEA, which is a global design agency based, uh, uh, well, uh, not all over, but uh, pretty much all over, becoming quite a big, big group of people working on strategic design. Um, and yeah, and me and Emily, we've been working closely uh, building this um, idea around planet centric design, which is kind of the frames around what we will be doing today. Uh, and really, our core belief is that design is a superpower. Uh, and that's why kind of the, the frame and the importance of what we do and also the, the responsibility we have as designers to use our superpower for good is kind of a, the mindset we go into um, when we think about this. Because uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So we really need to use our uh, superpower as designers um, in a good way. So that's kind of like the, the frames around it. And what we hope to do with this workshop is to bring some, um, some awareness around the whole responsibility that we have as designers when we create new pro products and services, and also learn a more concrete way of working uh, on addressing impact in, uh, in projects. So we're gonna work on a specific case. So some awareness and some concrete tools. That's what we hope you'll get out of it. Um, so we're gonna do a, a short introduction in the beginning on what we mean by planet-centric design. Um, and then we're gonna work in different breakout rooms uh, with in-groups to uh, tackle a specific case and using a framework that we have developed on identifying impact. Um, also creating impact strategies and redesigning the original um, concept that we'll be working with. And yeah, feel free to ask questions if you have any uh, at any time. Uh, we're gonna have a sharing reflection in the, in the end, but this is supposed to be an interactive session. So I really hope that you uh, yeah, find uh, space to participate and use your voice. Um, but I'm just going to go straight into the whole, uh, what, why do we do this? What's this all about? Uh, which is kind of like, why do we need to change? Um, it's kind of the, the entry point to when we start to talk about this. And it kind of fits well with the whole theme of this uh, conference this year, embracing change. Um, so what, what's actually changing? Uh, when we look at... Um, society right now there's a lot of a lot of things a lot of pieces are moving uh, and in a lot of different dimensions so uh, one of the dimensions is like people's values or people's expectations towards companies and what people care about is changing people are becoming more uh, concerned of uh, what's happening in the environment people are becoming more aware of a lot of social injustice and they really want companies to really start addressing it. Before it's been very 
normal for companies to be very neutral and not say not having uh, any opinions that's like you're not supposed to take sides you're not you're supposed to be very neutral but uh, consumers and human beings are demanding increasingly that companies actually take a stance and say what they mean and show their values and also we see that from a competitor um, or competition perspective and uh, there's a lot of movement between sectors between industries a lot of industries are being disrupted by uh, by new ways of thinking and also using sustainability as a way of, of marketing and, and approaching design and approaching what can be made made um, and then you have like the pressure and um, and like the um, the legal or political scene that's also influencing a lot on what companies can and need to do. And also the, these are all different pressures and obviously you have climate change uh, as a really big external factor right now uh, with COVID uh, really like shaking all of these dimensions and you can see that like, they're all kind of influencing each other. So citizens are influencing companies, companies are influencing uh, what you can buy. Like it's all connected into uh, this big shift in what we care about, which is really this disruption of focusing more on purpose and sustainable well-being. And what I mean by sustainable well-being is um, that so far or in history, uh, design has been uh, a really big uh, tool and important part of making products accessible to a lot of people. Uh, and it's been, uh, we're, we've been part of creating this uh, society of mass consumption. You see that uh, we have created the need to buy new stuff uh, and the need to always have the new and shiny object. Um, and it's been very product focused and it's not sustainable anymore. Um, and in our industry as designers, we've been working um, the last years a lot focusing on trying to get businesses to shift from a very product or technology focus over to a user focus or understanding the user, putting the user in the center, really like um, uh, making sure we, we, we get uh, user needs. Um, but what we see is that, uh, although that is a good thing, uh, what we see is that focusing on one, one specific user group is also limiting or having effects beyond that user group. So when we only have one specific target group we are designing for, sometimes we forget to think about the consequences for other groups or for society or planet at large. So the shift that we're kind of trying to introduce or that's already kind of happening, but the way we, we describe it is kind of, we need to move from having the user in the center to focusing more on the planet. Um, that does not mean that we're not putting humans in the center, but it's it means that we need to think about the entire ecosystem and what's good for the entire planet and not just one specific group. Uh, and why do we really care about it as designers? Um, I don't know, this is maybe familiar to some of you, uh, but um, you, there's like, uh, not a saying, but there's um, insights into the fact that there's a specific amount of the impacts happening uh, when creating um, something that is determined in the design phase, which we are responsible for. I don't know if any of you wants to guess how big a percentage uh, of the decision-making is actually happening in this, in this phase. And you can write in a chat or you can scream out <laughs> if you, would have, it be, you have a guess. Yeah, would it be like all of it, basically? Yeah, well, pretty close. <laughs> we have some 30%, 60, 70. I think it's actually quite low. It's it's quite high. Um, or is it? 
I can. Yeah, hear. I was thinking the answer was going to be low too, but you're asking, you know, the question is how much of the environmental impact is determined during the de design phase? A very big number, right? Because I was thinking at first, oh, well, we don't even think about it during the de design phase. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> How much is, is thought about right now? Yeah, that's a good, uh, it was a bit clumsy of me, uh, the way I presented it, but- No, no, it's then, per it, it makes perfect sense either way. Yeah, so it's actually 80%, which means that we we actually, or whoever as creators that are responsible for making these decisions in the design phase, we are determining so much of the future impact. It's, it's in our hands really, which means that uh, we have a really great power and it's kind of like well what do you want to do with this power <laughs> at least for us uh, we have an answer or we have a clear a sense of responsibility when it comes to this um, and that planet-centric design can be one of the solutions to a way of addressing it and the way we define planet-centric design is that it, that it addresses the unintended consequences of design by putting humanity and planet needs in the center of every uh, conversation. So that means not only focusing on the specific consumer group and what they desire, but lifting uh, the, the perspective to uh, human beings, not just as consumers, but as a whole person with the family and with a local community and thinking about the impact uh, at large. Um, so really, it's hard to pre like predict all of the unintended consequences, but to be more aware of these dimensions, we can at least try to be uh, conscious when we take um, these decisions that we do every day. Uh, and um, this is kind of our very, very simple model of innovation. You might recognize the balance breakthrough model in the middle, uh, having like understanding user needs and desire, uh, the business perspective viable and uh, what's feasible for the organization. That's kind of the way we've explained innovation so far, uh, which is still valid and still true. We need to have a balance between these perspectives to be able to, to succeed with innovation. But our point is really that we can't ignore uh, anymore the circle of impact uh, or the context of impact when we look at these dimensions. Uh, so what do we actually mean by impact? Um, we kind of explain it in three different layers. So in the core, we still have people, but we try to lift, lift the perspective from just consumers to human beings. Uh, and what kind of needs and behaviors they have and what we can do to uh, empower humans to make good choices for themselves and for others. And then you have the societal la layer, which is connecting uh, or wh whatever humans are, how we are connected, the infrastructure, the communities, the culture, the values, the beliefs that we have created together and how how we are affecting that by how we design. Are we including or excluding specific communities? Are we uh, designing for good interactions uh, between people? Are we um, building better societies or not? And then the top layer, which is the planet, uh, which is more the environmental perspective of how do we use uh, how, how will this uh, affect the use of resources? Are we using more resources than we need? Uh, and what's the actual footprint when we uh, create this? So it's these three dimensions of impact. Uh, and just to explain it a little bit more, we used Airbnb as, a, as an example. So if you look at Airbnb as a company, I'm, I'm just gonna assume you guys have heard of it. It's a rental, a platform um, where anyone pretty much can put their uh, their home up for rent. Um, and if you look at from a people perspective, when Airbnb was launched, it really gave uh, a lot of people a new possibility of in income. Uh, it also it was a, 
a very like uh, enabling uh, user experience that made it very easy for a lot of more people to join in. Uh, on the society part, it kind of disrupted um, the hospitality sector, which has been kind of looked upon as maybe not, yeah, these big, big hotels and kind of challenging them was kind of like uh, looked upon as something good. And also they're kind of from an environmental perspective, they're using resources that are existing. So they're not building a lot of new stuff. They're actually using uh, things that are existing, which is good. Uh, and obviously there's a lot more dimensions to it, but just to name a few. Um, but if you look at then the unintended consequences of the service and being so successful, you see that uh, on the people side, it's created, um, it, it's made it, made it hard for a lot of people to live in, in larger cities because it's affecting the, on the societal layer, it's affected, um, it's been becoming more, more lucrative to rent out Airbnb apartments rather than renting out to normal people. So it's making it harder for people to live in cities like Barcelona or Madrid, um, which is a negative effect, which they probably didn't plan for. Also, you've seen the platform and the way it's been designed has made it um, not necessarily so inclusive uh, when it comes to who, who you host and who you trust. Uh, and also on the planetary dimension, maybe, it's harder to pinpoint some very negative effects, but um, but it has to some degree affected the tourism level. Um, so these are just some examples of things that they probably didn't think of when they designed Airbnb, but has really big consequences for uh, the society and for people actually. So, um, when we talk about impact again, uh, we look at it from two, uh, two perspectives. So it's both from an inside out perspective. So as a business or as an organization, what kind of impact do you have on your surroundings, on people, on society, on planet? Uh, what kind of footprint do you, uh, in the way you deliver your products or services have? But then also from an outside in perspective, uh, getting to know your context and the fact that you are a piece in an ecosystem, what kind of dimensions are actually affecting your business and how you can run. And we've seen lately one really big factor that's been affecting a lot of people, uh, pretty much everyone in the entire world with COVID right now and how it's really, it's, it's impossible to look at a business and not see the context and see how interconnected we are. Uh, so learning and understanding what kind of factors that might be impacting the way you can run your business or your organization is also another dimension to it. And back looking at uh, Airbnb and how they have kind of uh, handled this COVID crisis being impacted by these external factors of, of COVID. Um, there was a lot of people saying like, oh, they're gonna go bankrupt right now. Actually, the hotels are doing better than Airbnb, but they've done a lot of things to try to kind of combat or come up with uh, other solutions, like making a lot of digital services uh, on their platform, building good guides for hosts to be able to still maintain uh, visitors. They've also introduced a new concept of like staycation and trying to move because people can't go so far away and using using the fact that people might need to be in isolation or they need to work in peace away from their kids and like using that as uh, a way of reinventing themselves as well so just to give an example of how this framework is kind of or how we think about it from an uh, impact perspective um and uh, some, we have a, a couple of approaches to, to planet centricity as well, um, and which is kind of the dimensions and how we see our pieces in what planet centric means. Uh, one is obviously sustainable, uh, the balance between like human and planetary needs. Um, 
and making sure that you're not overstepping or uh, using more resources than what you can. Um, and then behavioral, which is a really huge core in being able to actually solve this uh, big uh, wicked problems that we're into right now, uh, both socially and environmentally. The fact that we have every technology and every solution to the climate changes uh, available. It's not, it's not that we don't have solutions. It's the fact that people are not willing to change and not, not just individuals, but governments. And so understanding how behavioral psych psychology can play a really uh, important part, both in changing organizations and changing human beings uh, into buying other things or uh, making more sustainable choices. Um, and this whole perspective is a very systemic perspective when it comes to understanding how everything is interconnected, looking into the ecosystem of where you are placed and how you are actually influenced by these external forces. Circular, which is kind of the, the new business model of how, how we can actually go about and have a change in how we look at resources and moving away from the concept of waste. Um, and then also futuristic, which is on one way understanding what we know about what's going to happen uh, when it comes to climate and using that in decision making today, but also about creating positive future, uh, future scenarios, because right now we have a really like the only big scenario we have is a very bleach like uh, a depressing view of everything is going down the drain, but we need to start actually creating some positive uh, scenarios and exploring that to be able to also get there and try to kind of build those um, those positive futures. Because if we can't imagine them, it's going to be very hard to create them. And now I think I've talked way too long, so let's go to get to this uh, group activity. Uh, so we can try to use some of these perspectives. Um, yeah, Emily. Yes, so um, in the group activity in a little bit, we will be sharing um, Miro link um, so that you can actually access a virtual collaboration tool for you to collaborate with each other and work on the exercises together. So um, Eden, if you can actually just move to the next slide. Um, so we have a concrete case um, that we would like you as a, as four different small groups to actually um, try to develop the concepts and understanding the type of impact that this project would create um, and also understand how we can actually develop impact strategies to either mitigate um, negative impact or uh, perhaps um, even uh, expand or, or uh, have a better uh, positive impact that you have identified. Um, in the end of the exercise, we will also ask you to redesign the concept so that you can actually have a better result um, with the considerations that Eden have introduced earlier um, in mind. So um, we have divided the groups uh, into four groups. So um, on the screen, you can see that uh, we try to make sure that it's even number, but because uh, the participant uh, we are short a few number today, so I've moved a few people around. So I believe, Sarah, you will actually be in group four, and Diane, you will be in group two. So um, I will open up the breakout rooms for you to enter uh, just in a few uh, seconds. And um, perhaps not all of you have actually used the tool Miro. And um, so in the next slide, um, uh, Eden has a quick screenshot. So um, perhaps some of you are familiar with Mural, which is M-U-R-A-L. Miro is very similar in terms of um, how it actually functions. So um, the usual shortcuts that you use uh, will still apply. Um, so once, once you get in, uh, Chrome browser will work best. Um, you don't have to download any app. You can basically access it using your browser uh, and the link would actually give you the access. So you will enter as an anonymous user. So in the beginning, uh, once we get into the mural link, um, we will actually uh, walk you through the exercise as a whole group before you enter the breakout rooms uh, with your smaller team. Um, but before we actually do that, we just have a few uh, uh, small reminders for you. Um, because as a group, 
um, since it's the first time that everybody worked together. Um, uh, if you were able to turn on your camera and also participate uh, with audio and video, that would be great so that it's easier to connect with each other. And uh, of course, this is a project that is new to all of us. So one way that you can actually build on each other's ideas is to um, listen and also uh, try to use an approach called uh, yes and and build on it uh, instead of uh, perhaps rejecting it right on the first uh, instinct. Um, so that way you can actually try to find different inspiration and perspectives. So um, be mindful of how we have different profiles, different experiences in the room. So make sure that uh, everybody's voice can be heard. Uh, so have a discussion and be respectful of each other. So I'm going to share the link of the mirror board. Let's see here. Uh, since we have four groups, me and Emily, we will go and visit the different groups uh, so you can ask questions. But before, yeah, I'm going to just share screen so you can we can go through the case together and just some of the exercises so you all can ask some questions initially if you have any uh, yes. any insecurities about uh, the framework or anything. Um, so this is one here. Um, so I hope all of you have now seen the link in the chat. So by clicking on it, you will be entering the mirror board. So I'm just going to look here. Uh, so, but actually it would be useful to watch the joint screen <laughs> before. Uh, but um, yeah, if you can follow my um, view. And so in this board, what you need to, if you're not familiar with the board, what you need to know when it comes to the tools is really just a post-it, which you find on the side. Uh, and you can actually just double click on a screen and a post-it will appear. And then in the post-it you can write. That's pretty much the technology we'll be using. Um, and then maybe asking uh, someone in your team if you're confused about it. Uh, but yeah, so we are gonna do a couple of different activities, but first I'm just gonna explain uh, a little bit, or Emily actually, yeah. Are you gonna talk through the case or should I? You are muted, so uh, that's gonna be hard to hear. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a bit difficult. You would have thought that I learned after six months of practice. <laughs> um, yeah. So I hope everybody can see, I tried to bring you to the board. So the concrete case we have today is, some, uh, is a project called Reimagining Gillowoop. So Gillowulp is actually a neighborhood. It's a district just outside of uh, Dana City, Aarhus. So um, it's the municipality of Aarhus is actually the second largest city in Denmark. So Gillowulp is actually a city district. Um, and uh, so back in the 70s, the municipality uh, invested in a modernizing project. Uh, so um, they want to build a, a neighborhood that is actually very uh, contemporary, that has all different kinds of function, uh, and with clean and uh, modern tech, uh, modern architecture. But what they actually discovered once the project is built is that um, the, the way that the design uh, was implemented, it was not inviting at all. And all the concrete um, facility actually made it very difficult for people to feel welcome. And uh, so there's increasing crime rates and, um, and people feel like it's becoming an urban ghetto. So they don't want to be there and uh, there's a very bad image and also a perception of the neighborhood uh, for, for Denmark. So what, they, uh, what the municipality of Denmark and also the government of Denmark actually has uh, commissioned is that they would like to have a renewal project to reimagine this particular city district. So they want to create a much more multicultural inviting uh, city uh, neighborhood for people to uh, be reintroduced to this district. So they want to add more green spaces, diverse functions, perhaps uh, uh, office buildings and different uh, typologies in order to make sure that um, this can be rebranded. Um, so the, um, the goal of today is that you will be working in your team and, uh, and imagine that you are actually part of the design team that is going to be working on the project. So Eden is gonna walk through the exercise with you. Um, if you just follow her cursor, 
Yeah. So uh, each group has a board with different exercises. So we, if I zoom out, you see there are four four areas. So each group will firstly find their group and then go through it. But I'm just going to use group one as an example. Um, so the first task would be to to jointly make sure that you understand uh, the, the project in the same way and writing a couple of words on how you how you see the, the project. Um, so once you have a more or less common understanding, um, you're going to use a framework that is about identifying the possible impacts. And here you have three, three, these three dimensions that I mentioned earlier, which is people, society, and planet. Uh, and what you can do is to take some individual time on each of these areas and then have a group uh, show and tell on the ideas that you come up with when it comes to looking at how how doing this project might like what kind of people would you might uh, be impacting in this project um, and impact can be both positive and negative so it's easy to go straight to the negative but think about also the positive ways you can impact these people directly and indirectly and also identifying who are who are these actors in this uh, in this um, into play and then society the same and how is it in influencing the local community or other structures infrastructure and the surroundings directly indirectly and then lastly on planet uh, how is it affecting the climate the uh, local neighborhoods and uh, whatever you're constructing so that's the first exercise uh, and once you map that each each group gets a specific stakeholder to kind of um, follow or to try to have in the back of their minds. Um, but then you're going to choose some of the some of the impacts that you mapped in the previous exercise and try to make sure that you uh, uh, describe and identify what kind of strategies you want to do to tackle uh, tackle this either positive or negative impact with um, these kinds of strategies. So. In the example here, you have people as an impact type. And, and the description of the impact is the fact that uh, imagine this, pro, uh, this uh, revamping of the city becomes a really big success. And then the housing prices is, uh, becomes higher because it's becoming a more attractive area. And that might make some people not afford or the people that used to live there not afford to live there anymore um one thing you do then is to choose you know, what kind of strategy you want to do do you want to keep that happening do you want to avoid this to happen or do you want to uh, amplify and then you think about how can you try to in this case when you want to avoid it how can you try to um come up with a strategy that makes you avoid this issue uh, and after then, the last exercise is about redesigning the projects based on the strategies, strategies that you have built. You're going to go deeper into the ideas around how to actually do that, to reimagine how this project might be delivered. So that's just like a fast run through of the decks. So now uh, Emily is going to send you into the breakout room. So in the top, you can see that the groups are numbered. And number one is on top, and then two and three and four. So firstly, when you get into the breakout rooms, you can find your board uh, line, and uh, then you can connect with your group. Yes. So Any I'm questions gonna... before we go away from this plenary? We're also going to go and pop in to make sure that if you have any questions, we can answer it. Um, I see a question from uh, Jabber. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name incorrectly. Um, he says, are we describing the impact of the current state or redesign? So um, I would say based on the description of the project. So in the first part of the exercise, you're describing what the project is about. And then, uh, so describe the impact of what you believe is the current project's intention and uh, approach. 
and then then you go into redesign so the redesign comes last i hope that answers the question um Eden and i will um, alternate going into the rooms um so i will open the rooms and you can actually see a pop-up of your screen to enter the breakout room if you have any questions please feel free to send me a chat um so that we can know you're having issues yeah i think everybody's back now Cool. So uh, we wanted to go through group by group, uh, showing a bit on your thoughts. So you all have different stakeholders and I'm sure pretty different ideas either way. So I think it would be interesting to see what everyone's come up with. Um, and also if you have some uh, reflections around the learnings that you made uh, we can do that also um, I'm just going to zoom into firstly group one uh, and then I'm hoping one of us, someone from group one wants to um, share some of the learnings or um, what you have looked uh, looked upon when it came, comes to impact and strategies and ideas sure sorry just yeah. Um, just a quick note, Eden, do you want to say how long uh, maybe the sharing should be so that we can keep track of time? Good point, yeah. Uh, let's try to keep it within three minutes, if that's possible. Sure. Yeah, um, so we have uh, three basic um, ideas. If you um, see, we talked about um, air, well, if you go to the, the impact, yeah, that one. Um, we talked about, um, we just picked three things, um, air pollution, um, and then being the idea of maybe being a, a case study and the idea about declining water resources. So those were our three, three focuses. And then if you go to the next board, um, the board to the right, uh, for the air pollution, um, impact uh we thought of an alternative which would be um instead of having roads be the central uh avenue uh maybe do biking and walking trails and have them buffer or buffer buffer them with plants and, and green space and have those connected to parks you know outside of the the city and so that way you can um transport humans and more than human um or more than human relatives um can have safe places to go. Uh, so that was one idea. Another idea was um, to have this be a showcase and a, uh, a uh, compelling state case study of community living or, and, and have that case study and perception be part of the, like a product itself. So selling the story, if you will, is an idea. Uh, and then lastly, um, addressing um, water needs by gaining, by using rainwater gathering technology. So you would have um, the infrastructure um, needed to do that as well. So how, how do you think and, um, the stakeholder that you got assigned affected the way you looked at the idea? Right, we were not the best at um, paying attention to our stakeholder, um, but you could, um, you know, the if you have the bike trails, um, they could have, um, you could have the rental bikes available and that could be, um, you know, part of, part of an income, uh, an, an income generating for the, for the city and a case study could do that as well. And hopefully the rainwater technology would um, be somehow have a cost savings for the for the municipality as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can do more of the learnings in the end, maybe, and then we go through the tasks first. Um, so thank you for sharing. Uh, let's move to group two. That's us. So we actually focused on homeowners um, who wanted to live in a safe and livable community and have their property increase in value over time. 
and we looked at um, out of all the impacts we identified, we chose three, one from people, one from society, and one from planet. Our stakeholder was an environment group. So it was very important to be environmentally friendly and um, sustainable. So in terms of people that are, that are value increase, so we wanted to impact to create that outcome. And by building and showcasing environment friendly homes and using recycled materials to reduce the carbon footprint, so that was going to meet the, the person's um, outcome as well as the environment group um, desires. For society, we wanted to avoid having socioeconomic inequality. Um, and how we would achieve that is by having a social network of partners that would on sale and recyclables and reinvest back into the local community. And the last one was we wanted to mitigate increased general waste because we realised we couldn't avoid it. So we wanted to mitigate it and have a high consumables to recycle and repurpose. So we took those three solutions across and we only had time to, to um, ideate on one. And that was how might we build and showcase environment friendly homes in the community. Um, and we were looking at sourcing sustainable timber, identifying environment friendly materials, um, alternative energy um, usage, uh, sourcing local and recycling recyclable materials, um, encouraging employees to work from home, um, uh, having communal gardens that actually produce produces parts of the food chain, uh, local produce like beekeeping, um, uh, in, in employing local communities for small business, um, having small homes, tiny houses, looking at the architectural design so that it actually fits in with the landscape um, uh, look and feel, renewable energy, um, and have more green areas uh, and mobile homes. So that's where we got to. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Let's see. Um, then group three. Anyone? I'm going. <laughs> okay. I will try. Uh, yeah, we have a little mix of, of all the tasks, but uh, it's fine. Um, because we spent a lot of time thinking about the people living there, um, the, the actual residents, the local business owners, civil servants, and the new residents, and the impact on, uh, for example, um, the people they feel lost because they don't recognize the place they live anymore. Uh, with the house, uh, the the price rising and the the, the environment changing a lot, uh, so we were really focusing and trying to integrate the, the residents in the design process. Uh, on this society, we were not sure if uh, changing the neighborhood will impact um, uh, the culture and the relationships between the the neighborhoods and how it was going to impact the neighborhoods around that one if the problems were not going to spread like outside of this ne the the neighborhood who is who is changing maybe uh but on the positive impacts we have like more transportation maybe more schools and whatever and on the planet we were thinking about the the pollution uh, from the construction and maybe more traffic with more cars and if um there is enough uh, resources to to be used by more people who are going to living there. And so as our main um, stakeholders were the, the, the residents, we were really trying to uh, put them in the center of all the decisions. Uh, as the design team, we would try to um, uh, hire people from the neighborhood to, to work with us, not only as part of the co-creation, uh, system uh, like doing a, a typical research with uh, investigation and interviews with people and and to see how they live blah blah blah, blah but also uh, trying to create employment with the new construction and to use the um, the how do you say uh, the know-how of the people living there because maybe we have architects designers people working on construction, on 
whatever uh, teachers who can uh, who are now unemployed and they could have a job working on their own neighborhood and create like this economic ecosystem. Uh, so they part on the people can be part of the decision in the um, in the co-creation, but also working for real on the on the redesigning of the of the neighborhoods. Uh, that's the resume, I think. Cool. It's so interesting to see the different angles here in groups. Huh? So let's see the last, uh, but not least, group four. You can go ahead, Sarah. Okay. So yeah, um, actually we found out that we were focusing on the corporate investor quite at the end. So we just try to understand the, the project and everything. And our first concern is, is this project actually something people in the neighborhood want or need? And we started to see like which impact this could have on people, society, and we were also seeing like people, society are very close to each other. And we also divided the impacts, like orange was negative, blue was positive. And what else happened now? I don't remember. Yeah, one of the impacts we found is whatever you do, if you don't give this place an identity that is, that is uh, attached to locals and also uh, Arjus, it will be the same failure in 20 years, even if it has a good uh, design. Um, so then we thought about what about gentrification and what about the environmental impact of having a double density because it will demand more resources and it will have a lot of more waste, pollution. And can you move the screen a bit to the proposal we have? So at the end, we decided that the corporate investor should focus on first giving this place an identity and this identity needs to be co-created with, with a residents and people who will use this, this neighborhood. And in terms of uh, development, we need to guarantee that we have a mixture of people. So we said, what if we give loans to existing residents in case prices go higher, they don't have to displace to other neighborhoods. And then we have this prioritizing elderly and immigration immigrants to have access to housing. And what was the order? And yeah, also um, giving young people uh, like uh, loans or, or affordable prices to get their first home. We also thought it's important to make this um, a circular neighborhood and um, try to be sustainable and only work with uh, certified sustainable constructors and, and, pro and providers. And then at the end, we thought, what if we put food at the core of the identity of Gellerus? So uh, about local production, uh, growing, sharing, ethnical food markets. So this becomes the core of the activities in the, in, in the neighborhood, but it's just an idea because I, we think we need to ask people what is the identity they want? So, yeah, that was it. Cool. Wow. It's so, yeah, it's uh, really cool to hear all your ideas and how different they are. <laughs> so excited. This is uh, really big. Um, I'm just going to switch. I was going to say real quick, but I'm not sure it's going to be quick, but uh, to the presentation again. Um, Thank you so much for sharing so far. Uh, we just also kind of wanted to ask you a little bit about, mm, also when you've heard the, the other groups now, if you have any reflections on, um, yeah, what, what you've learned, if you have learned anything with this exercise, uh, if you see any ways you could apply this uh, way of thinking into your work, um, there is a, some space in the mirror board, so you can write it while we talk, but if we wanted to do it kind of like a plenary sharing session. Um, so feel free to, I was gonna say scream, scream out if you have any um, reflections you wanna share or write it in the chat. I 
I, I can go um, <clears throat> very quickly. I, I, I really enjoy this exercise in that um, I think oftentimes, especially in, in my group where I work, uh, we're a human-centered design team. We're often only thinking about the user, the customer, or the colleague experience. So to be able to kind of expand our horizon to consider the impact not only on the people, the society, and the planet, it really kind of challenged us in our thinking to consider these aspects of the design. So I thought that was a very valuable exercise. And I think for that, a lot of um, our conversations or outputs, even for example, Sarah mentioning, well, what is the identity? You know, if you're only looking at uh, the people or the user perspective, maybe that question or that thought may not come up. Um, so I thought that was extremely valuable. And then in our share back, considering the different stakeholders, again, that's another thing that I think we could do more often or do a bit better improve upon, especially in, in, from my experience, our stakeholders are not only the business, not only considering the viability component, but you know, the resident community, you know, the, the, the um, cost conscious municipality, I think that was also eye opening and it was, it led for a more fruitful kind of discussion and con considerations in what that revamp and redesign could be. So I learned a lot, you know, in short, I learned a lot from this exercise and I appreciated uh, working through it with our colleagues and our uh, workshop partners. So thank you again. Cool, thank you for sharing. Any other reflections? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I had yes. an what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Jenny. <laughs> Thanks. No, I, I think it's really, really interesting. And in, in thinking about like changing a neighborhood, you can think it's quite obvious to think about the people and the environment and it, because it's a huge, huge project. And my doubts are always like, how can I apply that to a an app for a bank or I mean the, the typical project we have I would love to work for in a city project but mainly in consultancy we are used to apps websites work for big companies and and that's why I see always really hard to think a larger than the company and and when you build a digital product what's the real impact on society and planet and that's the real challenge we we're facing in our daily daily job yeah that's... thank you so Ida, i actually really like the impact um uh, the task number three how you set that out um because as a change manager, I, I do impact assessments all the time, but I had not seen that format of the, the, the five impact strategies, like the avoid, mitigate, accept, amplify, and create. So that actually really helped me recalibrate my thinking about how to do impact assessments going forward. Um, my question for you is that if this was a, like a live um, project and you've broken groups out to ideate and come up with these, these strategies, what would be the next step? Would you actually then co collapse all the feedback and come up with a plan? Uh, so there's many ways you could use this, uh, even like in different phases in the project, it can be in the scoping of the specific project. Uh, and it can be also in the ideation to be able to like develop different kinds of concepts and evaluate, okay, if we go with this concept, what kind of impact would that cause? If you go with this concept, like using it as the kind of a criteria builder around choosing which concept you want to go for. Um, this is kind of like a, uh, the setup we have right now is like very, it's not so, um, um, realistic in the sense that we make it into in this stage, but we have these different different parts of the tools that you can use in different contexts, especially in, in ideation. So I would use it in a way to qualify or also just to, to broaden the horizon when you do ideate because it's bringing in a lot of different, um, different aspects that you might not think of if you go straight to like, I want to make this app uh, mode and you want to think about only the user, you might not think about all of these um, effects uh, and like 
especially for us, like we work mostly with digital projects uh, or a lot of like the digitalization uh, services kind of thing. Um, but it's always, there is always some perspectives on who it's affecting. Like if you're working on a, with a bank, who are you including or excluding when building services, even like digital inclusion or or like immigrants not accessing uh, the financial services because you don't have a personal number. There's so many dimensions you can bring into uh, into a project, even though it's digital or even though it's more more typical to what we normally work with if it's a, a insurance company or whatever. Um, but it's kind of like uh, where where is this uh, company in the ecosystem? what kind of effects, like what kind of wicked problems are they closest to uh, and how can they influence it? Like if in the financial sector, it's well, the ability to be a part of society or not part of society, it's a big issue. If it's a consumer products, uh, how you are um, contributing to consumerism or not, like there's always a bigger problem any industry can tackle and try to kind of bring that into into the problem or into the, um, the concrete project you're working on. Um, just, I think, yeah, please. Sorry. I just heard someone speak, but maybe not. Um, yeah, we, we, we need to wrap up pretty soon, but I, I wish we had more time to get your feedback. So if you have more concrete feedback, feel free to put it in the mirror board because we would really love to hear uh, both uh, positive, constructive, any, any feedback really. Um, but just to kind of summarize some of the parts and give you maybe some ideas on where to kind of start on because it's, it's both a mindset that you can bring into anything, but it's also some concrete tools. Um, so trying to, again, connect whatever you're working with to a bigger, wicked problem in society or for for the the group that you're working on introducing other stakeholders other types of stakeholders introducing planet or society as a stakeholder and kind of learning about how you are interconnected and who you're affecting directly indirectly with the, where you are in the ecosystem um, and also about collaborating more uh, with others this is kind of a topic that at least that we feel is too important to be like keeping your tools to yourself or keeping your learning to yourself. It's kind of something we need to share and it's better that all designers are starting to think of this and bringing it into every project than competing about who is doing it better. So really ha having more like a collaborative approach, which is comes naturally to designers in one degree, but also when you're having like the business, uh, you're from different studios, people are still tend to be a bit like um, secretive on their tools, but we really want to be more open because uh, yeah, so we want to share. Some of the tools that we have used is, uh, well, obviously this dimensions that we've introduced to you today, but also we use a tool that's called Service Model Canvas, which is a specific tool to rescope uh, projects that could be a separate, separate workshop of its own and um, another thing that we've seen other uh, ways of doing is that the whole adding adding uh, other kinds of stakeholders the same way you kind of make personas maybe adding also a specific in this case like the Baltic Sea as a stakeholder in your project uh, and then the uh, idea is also from the more human point of sustainability we made uh, a web page where you can get different perspectives uh, of people. It's kind of two two decks or cards where you you combine um, two traits of people, and you can kind of make sure, or you can use it in ideation to see if you know, the way you design your your concept would actually fit in different contexts. That's open, and like you can find it on this link. The other ones, uh, if you want, uh, you can write your email in the chat, and then we can send you uh, send you the the template. 
um, and also putting on another hat, both me and Emily were part of a, um, a network called The Hive, which is really, it's mostly Norwegian, but we're doing everything in English and it's open to anyone. And uh, trying to gather tools that can help companies bring climate action into their workplace. So it's everything from design tools to tools for every, any kind of company. Um, and we're all, always hope uh, like uh, interested in getting more perspectives and uh, learning and sharing together in this network. So that's also a space if you wanna keep, keep sharing and learning with us. Uh, so Emily, I don't know if you have any final uh, remarks you wanna share. Um, no, I think it's, you've wrapped up pretty well. We really thank you uh, for participating. It's very exciting to see different perspectives and that you have all contributed to the discussion. Um, as Eden suggested um, earlier that design is the superpower and it's up to us to actually um, use this to influence the projects and the different collaboration that we're a part of. So um, we really would uh, love for, for you to connect with us. So please reach out and um, yeah, contact us for questions and uh, we would love to yeah, connect.